one notable feature about the response to the pandemic in the UK has been the contrasting approaches taken by each of the four nations with decisions on the lockdown being taken at different times and in different ways. And some regions of England have also made their own decisions. As part of our look at the state of governance of the UK, my colleague Rita Chakrabarti has been to Sheffield to ask if the recovery from the crisis is best handled at a local level. There's been no rest at St Mary's Church in Sheffield during lockdown. Each of these boxes is for a family which can no longer afford to feed itself. The church used to provide subsidised food at its cafe when it was open, but now they're feeding up to 900 people. We've heard from people who have been uh, trying to get onto universal credit and obviously that was massively delayed, people's circumstances that have changed and certainly at the very beginning massive financial insecurity. And now kind of things beginning to change, people aren't sure, having been furloughed, perhaps if their jobs will continue, so it's actually the longer term insecurity now that's beginning to be exposed. The COVID-19 crisis has hit some parts of the country much worse than others and everyone now from the Prime Minister down is talking about using this moment to build a better Britain. But who is best placed to do that? National government or regional? Dan Jarvis says it should be local people making local decisions about the recovery. He's a Labour MP but was elected mayor of the Sheffield city region two years ago. Yorkshire and the Humber has a population greater than that of Scotland, twice that of Wales, but we simply don't have the same levels of powers um, allocated to us from national government. And I think increasingly there is an understanding that people in Whitehall and in Westminster just simply don't have the kind of fingertip knowledge that you need to make some of these decisions and to allocate resource where it will add the greatest benefit. And that's the opportunity of devolution. He may be in luck. The government has to deliver for the swathes of former Labour voters, many in the north of England, who backed it at the last election. The COVID-19 crisis comes at a time when ministers are increasingly focused on devolving power to the English regions. Do you envisage, with us coming out of this crisis, a greater devolution of powers, in a sense, a more chequered government within England? Yes, I think we do. Uh, clearly, there is... Uh a humility about what central government alone can achieve. And England is one of the most centralised countries uh, in Europe. And I think we are looking at what we can do to deliver sensible devolution on an appropriate fra uh, geographical framework. Will it work? Ben is an apprentice. He's 20 and is training to become a highly skilled electronics engineer, an industry many hope will help power the region into recovery. He's less interested in who's in charge, but wants everyone to have the same opportunities. I don't think it matters who makes the decision. It just needs to be the right decision. Not everyone is, is as fortunate as, as myself and my, my colleagues. Um, so I think kind of widespreading that to different regions of the country so that we can really boost the nation together instead of just little segments of the country that are really fortunate. That is the risk with decentralisation, that some areas might miss out. But the England that entered the COVID-19 pandemic is probably not the England that will emerge from it. Quite how it will look is still up for debate. Rita Chakrabarti, BBC News, Sheffield.